Democratic leader Chuck Schumer tonight is saying he thinks that is a partisan move and that Nunez's real goal is to try and obstruct the Mueller probe. Martha? Ed, thank you very much. So here now with more, Corey Lewandowski and David Bossi, who just both walked out of a meeting uh, that they concluded with President Trump. They are veterans of the Trump campaign and authors of the inside story of that experience, which is called Let Trump Be Trump. So um, welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you both tonight. So Thanks, what, what, what's the president's feeling about this North Korea situation? What did he say to you? Well, look, you know, Martha, what he said was it's very simple. If it happens, it happens. And he is not going to cave to other people's demands. This president is a man who has a resolve and a dedication and a determination to do what is right, which is to denuclearize North Korea, but also to make sure that the United States is protected. And if this meeting happens, then it happens. Nobody preceding this president has gotten talks to this level of sophistication. This is a man who's the best deal maker. But if this meeting takes place, great. If if it doesn't, they will continue to have economic sanctions to put a stranglehold on North Korea. Yeah, David, uh, the president has now said twice that he thinks that the second meeting, we all remember when Kim Jong-un was seen on that train going to China to meet with President Xi. The president thinks that he said something to Kim Jong-un during that meeting that changed the dynamic. Can you shed any light on that? Well, I, I, I wish I could, Martha, but I, I don't know what uh, the Chinese president said to Kim Jong-un. I, I would say that this president's maximum pressure campaign, which is clearly working, it is clearly bringing that uh, man, Kim Jong-un, to the table to talk, whether it's on that day or another day, we won't know. But clearly, the president's relationship with President Xi of China has made this happen and has helped make this happen. And great relationships like this president has with with world leaders is what is moving the ball forward down the road. But, Corey, does the president still feel good about his relationship with President Xi? Well, he does, but you also have to remember, for the longest time before this administration came in, China had taken advantage of the United States. We have a $500 billion trade deficit with China, and what this president has said is he has a good relationship with President Xi, but when it comes to the issue of trade and having a fair trade, it's going to be fair on both sides, and a $500 billion deficit is not fair to the people yeah. of America. Uh, David, the other day, the president basically said that the Libya model only kicks in if they don't come to the table and talk. And we heard today, he said very clearly that he offered security, uh, safety to Kim Jong-un because he doesn't want to end up like Muammar Gaddafi years after he gave up his, his nuclear weapons. Um, you, you know, in terms of that, if the president, if this summit doesn't happen, are we back, we're back to aggressive military posture and options? Well, this president has said if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And, and I think yeah. we look at what this president has done with the maximum pressure campaign to get this to, to get it to this point. We are this close. We are very close. And I believe this president is 100 percent committed to making a good deal for the United States of America and the world when it comes to the dictator in North Korea. So I, I'm very pleased at where we are. And I think the outcome, which is a long way off, and, and we have to go back to the Gorbachev Reagan days of looking at that. It took multiple meetings over many years, many summits to get to a deal. I, I don't mind if we come out of a deal here, come out of a meeting where they build a relationship for the future. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Um, these things take time. Is there they any do. chance, Corey, that it still happens on June 12th? Well, of course there's a chance. But look, if it doesn't happen, you know, the June 12th is an arbitrary deadline. This could happen before. It could happen after. The point is, you've got the United States at the highest levels of the government having conversations with the leader of North Korea. That has never happened. The 30 years of failed yeah. Washington, yeah, yeah, D.C. Yeah. policy prior to this never occurred. So this president is doing something no one's ever done before him. All right. I, I want to take you guys back uh, to put your campaign hats on for a minute, because there's a, a lot of questions about the timeline of when this investigation began. And now the, the timeline seems to be pushed back further, back to March 21. So now we're talking early spring. And, and what it links up with is the formation, uh, David, of, of the foreign policy team. And we all remember asking uh, questions of your campaign. Who's on the foreign policy team? Who are the big foreign policy advisors for this campaign? I asked the president uh, him that myself in, in New Hampshire. Who's going to be your advisors? And, and there was a long time where there wasn't an answer to that question. Then all of a sudden, March 21, you've got um, five people on the list. They include Carter Page. They include George Papadopoulos. Was that team put together under any pressure? Um, 
And, you know, were those people vetted? Did you have any idea that they might trigger, David, potentially any sort of questions about connections to Russia? Well, first of all, I wasn't there, Martha. I, I didn't come in until uh, later in the campaign. But Corey, you were there, right? Uh, yeah. Of course, was, I was. All right, so Corey, you answered the question. We Sorry winning, about that. Martha, so that's what we were winning, Martha. Yeah, don't I you remember so, we were so winning Corey, the primaries Corey, Corey were you that concerned time? about Carter Page or George Papadopoulos? Did anyone say, hey, you know, they're, they raised a few red flags. Maybe we should be concerned about having them on the team. Look, Martha, I, I don't know Carter Page or George Papadopoulos. I think I met George Papadopoulos once at the one meeting that transpired that Carter Page did not show up at. Right. Carter Page was recommended to the campaign by a well-known New York uh, individual who has been involved in national party politics for 40 years. So, you know, it was at the recommendation of a trusted source. Now, do we have the time with five people on the campaign to go back and, and do right. uh, a deep vetting, a background check? Of course not, right? But did, they, did those two individuals have any role in the campaign that was decision-making? Absolutely not. What about Paul Manafort? Because that also appears to be a trigger in early spring. We're hearing a lot about this, you know, how this all started. And I have a lot of questions about whether it was chicken or egg that started this. And I think that's what we all really have to look very closely at. But what about Paul Manafort? Did anyone say to you, you know, related to the government or otherwise, like, hmm, you know, you might want to take a closer look at that. I think there's some potentially um, questionable relationships with financial arrangements with the Ukraine, all that kind of thing. No, they, they never did. Look, I was never contacted as when I ran the campaign by the FBI or any other government agency as it related to potential people who were hiring or were going to potentially be involved yeah. in the campaign. Never. And, you know, if there was a spy place on the Trump campaign, there had better become accountability. Somebody had to be had better be walked out in handcuffs because it is the most egregious, most disgusting thing that our country as a democracy has ever seen. And if that's been done by a government official with their knowledge or their tacit knowledge, then that person better be walked out in handcuffs as well. Yeah. So, so Michael Caputo, as you heard Ed Henry um, reporting, is, is now claiming that an intermediary came to him and said, oh, I have some Hillary Clinton emails that you might be interested in. And he says that he eventually, um, you know, sort of <laughs> got nervous about it and said, you know what, I don't, I don't really want to meet with you. Did, did anyone ever approach either one of you and say, you know, what, we've got some Hillary Clinton Clinton emails, whether it was from the 30,000 batch or whether it was from the stuff that came out at the DNC and say, hey, wouldn't you like to take a look at this? Well, yeah, Mar Martha, let me just say, I was the king of Hillary Clinton emails. I, I had FOIAs for years, litigation for years with the State Department, the Clinton Foundation. We were forced, we were going every which direction to try to force those into the right. public eye. And no one ever came to me, ever came to me at any point before I joined the campaign, while I was on the campaign, to ever say that. So I just find it remarkable that today, all of a sudden, we're seeing this. This is it's an outrage. This president should be, uh, you know, I believe he is very upset about this, and I am very upset about it. I know that all of us that worked on this campaign and worked hard for our candidate to have to think that the United States government was spying on us is outrageous. Martha? No, there was no collusion. Nobody ever came to me. Oh. Nobody ever said to me, hey, do you want to see Crooked H's emails? Because she acid washed them. You know, 33,000 emails disappeared all of a sudden, and there's still been no investigation of it. Look, the bottom line is Donald Trump won this election through his sheer hard work. He outworked Hillary Clinton. He outworked the 16 Republican opponents in the primary, mm -hmm. and he's the president of the United States, and it wasn't a close election. Everybody knew who Hillary Clinton was, and nobody wanted to vote for her. Nobody came to me and asked me to see emails. They just knew she yeah. was a terrorist flawed candidate. She forgot where Wisconsin was. She forgot where Pennsylvania was. And they ran a terrible campaign. And no one wants to admit it. David, one last question on this to David. And then I've got Andrew McCarthy here, who wrote a very interesting piece on this tonight that we're, that we're going to um, talk about. But, you know, David, when you, when you look at, at all of this and you think about this potential that there was somebody, you know, in the campaign, as you say, um, there was a moment when the apparently James Comey and National Security Council members at the White House were talking about all this. They were worried about these individuals that I just mentioned. And they considered having a defensive briefing, saying, you know, why don't we bring in, somebody su suggested, why don't we bring in the Trump campaign and tell them what we're concerned about so at least they, they know about this, this potential or these concerns about these people. Would you have appreciated that? You know what? I, I think we would have. I, I find it to be remarkable, though, that we're having this conversation. Look, first of all, if there were spies in the campaign, they found nothing because there was no collusion. But that's what we're talking about, the origins and, and, and the reasons why these people I, may have been placed and whether or not they were put in, in your campaign in order to entrap people. 
So that's why yeah. we're, that's one of the reasons that we're talking about it. You know, if James Comey or somebody, uh, you know, in, in the federal government, in, in the Obama administration, had called us, and by the way, they called us on other things, on voter integrity and on cyber mm -hmm. stuff related to that. So this could have easily been part of some other outreach that they did, just like mm -hmm. the Department of Homeland Security did for others. Right. All right. Thanks, you guys. Good to see you both. David Bossie and Corey Lewandowski, thank, thank you, you thank for joining you. us tonight. So here now, uh, the aforementioned Andrew McCarthy, former federal prosecutor and national review.